Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the What's on Joe Mind YouTube channel. We have returned, and that means that somebody had some pictures to show. This time we are here to talk about the uh, release of images of the upcoming Destro from the 6-inch G.I. Joe classified line. And before we get into all that, we've got a couple of quick bits. First off... It's the first time that we're talking to you folks since everything went haywire and the world started to shut down because of the COVID-19 outbreak. We just wanted to take the time to remind you that we are thinking of you. Do your best to stay safe and out of public areas. Practice social distancing. Don't go out unless you have to. And generally, be smart. And our second bit, again, first time we've talked to you in a little bit, but we have an official full-time third host again here on the program and making his first appearance as an actual full-time host, the honcho, Mark Weber. Oh, man, that guy sucks. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> the honcho. <laughs> honcho. People are going to be able to mark like before web and after web, whether that's a marked, uh, you know, uptick or downtick in the quality of the show remains to be decided. It takes a lot but of pressure I, off Joe Colton. At, well, that's a good point. I am thrilled to be here and uh, happy to do the show with you guys moving forward. You know, it's still a, an exciting time for Joe. So for GI Joe, it's always an exciting time for Joe. Yeah, no, nobody can keep up with Joe Colton. We can't stop her. We can't even hope to contain her. Got haircuts and Kryptonian elves and prehensile toes. And <laughs> this is a lot going on. It's like a sitcom. Yes. Going back to our first point in the effort to keep you inside, of course, watch all of six videos in the glorious What's on Joe Mind YouTube library. And also... Be sure to visit Hasbro's channel, as they have put up the first 15 episodes of the old Sunbow cartoon series on YouTube for everybody to enjoy, absolutely free. If you're hankering for nostalgia like we know you are, be sure to head over to, to Hasbro's channel and check those out. Because, hey, if people watch these first 15, maybe they'll start putting up some more. Yeah. I think that's great. No one saw it coming, but... Right now, we need content. People need things to do. They have some spare time. So for, for the diehards, we've all seen them. But it absolutely cannot hurt the brand by having that stuff up. Now, if they put up some of the Deke episodes, eh, we, might have, we might have some trouble. But I think, think that's when we start everybody. talking about robots. Right? Everybody likes the Sunbow cartoon. So throw it on up there. Since it's the time we're all at home, those that have young children... They can introduce them to G.I. Joe, and there's a new generation of kids who may not know about it. Uh, good point. There you go. I like it. Makes too much sense. <laughs> Which is why stuff like that rarely happens. <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially on this program. Anyhow, let's get back to the business at hand. Yep. The new images of the six-inch Destro figure. You are seeing them pass by on your screen now. And we have expressly stolen our images from toywizards.com. So many thanks to them at toy-wizards.com. Pretty much the same pictures that you, you see everywhere else. That just ended a potentially good relationship right there, didn't it? That was quick. It might have been a record. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if you go back, I used them for the previous one, too, so... I suppose technically it's been a couple weeks. I don't know. Anyways, thanks guys. We appreciate it. Sorry. So Mark Weber, we'll start with you. And I want to first go ahead and give you the obligatory 30 seconds to complain about the chest cut on the Destro figure. You are on the clock now. The ab crunch chest cut 
and this is not Joe specific. This is a six inch figure specific. Brutal. We need to find a better way to preserve this one critical articulation point because this only works for robots and knights and people in armor. Or you have to put such a big secondary over it like roadblock to cover it up because you're embarrassed about how it looks. This cannot be the best way to do this. Let's all come together and find a better solution. And time. I had a question for the honcho. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the cut on the back? Oh, I don't think I've gotten a good look at that. It's hideous. Is that worse than brutal? Yes. Okay, I, I'm going to need another 30 seconds at least, right? <laughs> no, uh, no, no. Let's just move God. on. Marvel Legends has figured out a way to make their figures jointless coming up later this year. That is not a drug reference, by the way. But the rivets are coming out, right? They're finding ways to improve the basic buck that they've been using for quite some time. And that's fantastic. Good for them. Proud of them. Looks sensational. But we can't do better than this? Come on. I just... All right. You know, we've, we've been here before. True. So compared to the others... I do think it blends in a little better on the front on this guy. It's not as bad as Duke. Scarlet is passable because the female anatomy lends itself better to a break mid-torso. Snake Eyes was pretty rough. And Roadblocks is completely obscured, so his looks great. <laughs> but this is still a problem. I just believe it can be done better. I don't have the answer. But I believe it can be done better. Let's all create a big enough stink that it finally gets done. Okay. See, there's your extra time right there. All right. I see the floor. Okay. I'll ask an easy question. When the regular line came out, when, the, when we saw the four figures at New York Toy Fair, all three of us ranked those four figures. This is your chance to amend your ranking. By all means, don't talk about all five of them again. Just what number, where would you put Destro on your list, one being the best, five being the worst? Mark Weber. I hate that I kind of, that I let off with the chest cut rip, because by and large, I think this Destro figure is sensational. I think it's just about everything you could ever want from a Destro figure. So I, he was top of my list. I think he's the best six-inch figure we've seen yet. Joe Colton. Wow, okay. I would put him number two after Snake Eyes. So I'm pushing Scarlet down a notch. The detail on his head sculpt is amazing. It's beautiful. The whole figure is beautiful. Except for the chest thing. The chest cut. <laughs> Just because you don't want to start a fight, or yeah, okay. <laughs> I I do wish the jewel was a tad bigger, but I'm ho <laughs> I'm hoping it's just the angles. I am actually going to agree with the honcho on this one. I am going to put Destro at number one. I think he is the best of the five, and I was not wow. expecting that to be the case. I love the briefcase. I love the big blaster gun. I love the little gold gun. And then mm -hmm. it's, got a, it's got the holster on his leg. The detail is fantastic. The chest cut is a little bit more noticeable. I, I got to concede that one. I like that the collar looks like it has some armor plate in it, like it serves a purpose, besides just being fancy wear for the discotheque. I like his armored look. The plates on his shoulders and his knees work on a character like Destro a lot better than they work on characters like the Joes. Love the detail in the briefcase. This is awesome. Give it a, I would give it a 9.5 out of 10, because if I gave it a 10, then Mark would fight me about the chest cut. Right? Now, I came to praise Caesar, but there's still some things that I'm troubled with about the thing. But by and large, for something that retains the classic design cues and still updates the figure to make it look modern... Mm -hmm. I really think they hit it out of the park here. I, I think it's sensational. And especially that he's the only villain, as far as we know, in Wave 1. He better kick ass, right? Right. Yeah. If you're going to be 
that distinctive, you better be good. And mm-hmm. yeah, they didn't try to reinvent the wheel here. I believe our criticisms on, say, Scarlet and Roadblock were that there were some nods to the original designs, but they got a little bit far away from them. Mm-hmm. Not this time. I'll bet you this is what they imagined they were doing in 1983 when they put out that little Destro figure. They just couldn't make it quite that cool because it was 1983. Um, yeah. This is what they thought in their in their heads. This is what they were going for. In, in a way that I'm disappointed in the Snake Eyes figure, the way the pants don't work, even though they're just you know off black, it just doesn't work for me as well as the way they're working some of the matte versus shiny here, but it just works pretty much head to toe. Yeah. He is outstanding. Did you guys already place your pre-order? I did not. What? Well, when I saw it, it wasn't on pulse. And then the next thing I went back and it was sold out. So yeah, go check it again. It's been popping up and down all, since it was revealed. Not only did this make me pre-order it right away when I saw it, it got me off the fence on the rest of the series because I was holding out to see them in stores and be able to look at the paint job and, you know, 20 bucks a fig. I want to make sure that, you know, roadblock isn't cross-eyed, right? So I would have preferred to have them in my hand and choose the one I wanted to buy. But when I saw this guy, I just went, I'm in. I'm in. If I get a cross-eyed roadblock or a scarlet with no freckles, I'll take them back. I'll swap them. But that's driven a little bit by the the ambiguity of what retail is going to look like in a couple months. But Destro got me off the fence for the rest of the line. I already had my snake eyes. I'm in for the whole line. And that's something I've pushed on. You know, I, I wasn't dying for a six-inch Joe line myself because I'm a three-and-three-quarter guy. But... Like I said, when Sigma 6 came out, if you want to support the line, you really have to support the line. Or at least, if it's not your thing, I'm not saying you have to buy something you don't like or don't want in your collection. But you should at least wish it well, right? I want it to do well. And if you're on the fence, you know, get on the horse. And and I did. The Destro figure made me hop on, and, and I'm all in. Yeah. I have to say, too, I it caused me to rethink some of my previous thoughts as well. I, for a long time, several years, have said, I don't want to do G.I. Joe in another scale. If G.I. Joe comes back as a six-inch line, I'd like to see it be something different. I'd like to see new versions of familiar characters, if nothing else. You know what? Destro 1.1 here is fantastic and breaks that rule. I almost hate to say that, wow... I was totally wrong because they took that 1983 design, they tweaked it a little bit to make it work in a little bit more of a timeless fashion, and this is incredible. So kudos to to the design team and and everybody involved with with Destro really every step of the way because this is a great figure, and I cannot wait until July, probably July, hopefully July, to get this one in i gotta say being newly on the bandwagon here i was at walmart today looking for thermometers guess what they didn't have any but run of the toy aisle man i didn't pick up master of kung fu shang chi even though he was looking at me from the shelf because i saw somebody online did a beautiful quick kick custom out of him yeah doesn't take much to make that flip right no not at, not at all I looked at him, I held him, I thought about it, I put him back. I was halfway out of the store, and I went back and got him. Nice. That's how far I've jumped on board with the six-inch things. And, I I mean, I was planning to get them anyway, but I really wanted to see them on the shelf and make my selection. Mm -hmm. And Destro changed that. That's that's how powerful this thing is, for me. You sang the frozen fudgy song to yourself the rest of the way home. I'm in. I'm totally in. But I still want to rip it a little bit. What now? But I still want to rip into the figure a little bit. Oh, okay. There's a couple of misses here. Okay. okay. There's a really good shot on Pulse. Kind of a three-quarter overhead shot, giving a good look at the necklace. And from a design standpoint, if you look at the head, it's mask all the way down to, say, Adam's apple. And then 
the metal collar of the bottom of the mask mm -hmm. and then a couple inches of flesh before it gives way to the actual flesh part of the upper chest. Yep. And God, if you just could have pulled the mask down just a little bit further, then you just would have had a clean break of flesh to metal. Oh, mm. so not, you not show any of the skin you mean? Yeah. Like it's so close. And this is a big close up, right? As a figure itself, it wouldn't have been that hard. And you would have sacrificed a little bit of neck articulation, I suppose. But it's so close that I would have made that or suggested that that might, might look better. As a marketer, you got to be really careful when you're offering design suggestions. But that's one I would have thrown. One thing that lost me a little bit here, the armor plating, or what's actually looking to me like turning his collar into the hood of a cobra, because that's very clear on the artwork, right? Mm -hmm. And that's another bit, too, as you get into the packaging, the Cobra logo behind him and the Cobra logo on his briefcase and the absolute miss of anything Mars on the packaging at all, which is weird to me because they showed Mars very clearly on some barrels in the Toy Fair photography. Hmm. So... If Mars is a thing, shouldn't we be identifying Destro with it? And if it isn't, and I'm okay if it isn't, if Destro is a full-on agent of Cobra now, that's okay. But the metaphors are getting mixed, and it shouldn't be, especially on what's essentially a relaunch. Whatever they've decided Destro is, they should have uniform language to show that. And if you're going to put him in front of a Cobra logo and have his hood represent a Cobra and have his briefcase have a Cobra logo, mm -hmm. that's the story you're telling. And if that's not accurate, then you're already being confusing about the only villain that's going to be in Wave 1. That part frustrates me a little bit. And then there's an image from, I think it was Entertainment Earth, not sure, but a good look at the back of the briefcase which looks like it has a sculpted Cobra logo on it that's unpainted. Paint the logo. And they do on one side. If you're not going to paint it on the back side, then don't put a logo on the back side. Mm -hmm. But to only have it painted on one side it makes it look cheap. And, and again, maybe it's just the one they took the photo of. And the rest are better or different. But those bits jumped out at me a little bit. And then the, my ongoing complaint about the artwork over on the, the lower right corner of the box. I think it's cool that they're using different artists on some level. Individually, They all the art has been good and quality, but it makes the line look disjointed yeah. to have a different image. And again, not that everything has to be slavish to a real American hero, mm -hmm. but part of the joy and the power of that original 82 line and up was the Hector Greedo artwork and the artwork that followed him that was in that same vein. Yeah. That was a powerful part that linked this whole toy line together for 12 years. And the fact that they're getting away from that, it's a confusing line look. That's problematic. Yeah, it doesn't have to be slavish to 1982, but it should be consistent with itself. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the Cobra logo behind him, assuming he's going to be Cobra. Mm -hmm. But... If you look close at it, it's centered on the overall real estate behind him. It's not centered on the visible area. And two-thirds of the packaging is obscured. Most packaging is somewhat obscured, at least in a box format. But as a designer, you should read into that, right? It doesn't matter if the Cobra logo is centered. I mean, it's centered on the box. It's not centered on the figure, and it's not centered on the visible area. What's the point if it's centered, if you have artwork obscuring a portion of it and, a, and the layout of the briefcase over another chunk of it? Mm. Like, that's sloppy. Mm -hmm. Any last bits as we get out of here? I just bought one. <laughs> See? <laughs> I just wanted to scream that. <laughs> it's working. Explains why she got quiet all of a sudden, doesn't it? Yes! <laughs> is, is there any... Are you doing any other shopping that we don't know about? I might buy myself a child as well. Well, that certainly sounds personal.
I I hope that's a Star Wars reference. It is. It is. Oh, thank it's God. The animatronic okay. edition. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah. didn't you didn't use the accepted term Baby Yoda, so I was out. I was just not picking yeah. up what you're putting down. Let's get the wedding taken care of before I'm, you and West you and West you start buying children on the internet for you real. And Good lord. <laughs> I need a, I need child labor over here. <laughs> it's Mel. Mark Weber, any, any last bits on your way out? We're all Joe fans. And when we get new product that gets us excited, that's, you know, the best part of being a fan is when you see something and it's, it's damn near perfect because nitpicking a product used to be my job. I know I tend to come off as negative, but this, this figure is brilliant. And it's exactly what most fans want to see. Whether or not you're a six inch product supporter or not. New Joe product that modernizes it while still capturing the essence of the original. It's not that easy to do, I think, as we've seen. But this figure, I mean, it it is a home run. It walks a very fine tightrope very, very well. So I got almost nothing but praise for this figure. My excitement for this line has certainly ratcheted up since seeing the images here. Hey, if you like this video, give us a like down below. Give us a subscribe. We'd certainly like to do more of them for you, but we need to know that you're watching first because these things take time. You can also find us on our audio home at Podbean. That is whatsonjoemind.podbean.com. You can also find us on Facebook. Just search for What's On Joe Mind. We are at WOJM Podcast on Twitter, at What's On Joe Mine on Instagram. Join in the fun. We're always willing to take uh, feedback, letters, questions, anything you want to send us, What's On Joe Mind at gmail.com. For my hosts, my full time hosts, the Honcho Mark Weber, Woo! and the other Honcho Joe Colt. Wait, I'm a co honcho? <laughs> no, you're the honcho. She's the co-honcho. That, that didn't take long. You're the honcho. She's the co-honcho. This has been What's On Joe Mine. Thanks again. Remember, like and subscribe. I'm Mike Irizarry. Have a great night.